thank you very much, Brandon, and uh, to all your team also for inviting us. And uh, I would like also to thank our, the, the two previous speakers who came from very different perspectives. I think that mine is, is going to be also quite uh, uh, different. First, an apology. Uh, it should have been Frédéric De Vos, our Northern Europe uh, CEO, who should have presented today. Um, Chris said he felt a bit of an imposter. Uh, I think it would be the same way this morning because I've been doing my career mostly abroad, so the French model is not my forte. But I know it uh, well enough, uh, I believe. Um, uh, just a few comments about the previous presentation. Scottish Water is our biggest customer in, uh, in Britain in our non-regulated business. And I was quite impressed by uh, the democratic dimension. It goes beyond social, uh, Brandon, the democratic dimension of, of the way uh, water is uh, managed in the Netherlands called Les Pays-Bas in France. So, same notion. You may feel that Ireland has a complex administrative organization and political organization, uh, frankly. Instead of three levels, as in the Netherlands, France has four levels of, uh, uh, of uh, democratic representation. We have the state, of course. We have regions, 20 regions. We have 95 departements, equivalent to counties. And we have, believe it or not, 36,000 municipalities called <coughs> communes. So it's a huge complexity since uh, Julius Caesar, not many things have changed in that, uh, in that respect. Um, so the, the, the state, <coughs> uh, what differentiates France from, uh, from many uh, other countries is the fact that Water mar the water market is uh, mostly operated by private operators. Uh, of course, the key public authorities are the national government. We have six water agencies, which are mostly uh, on river basin uh, principles. And a lot of the responsibilities for managing water is delegated to the commune, which are the municipalities. And the provision of the service is being done either by, by the commune themselves, by the municipalities, or by uh, private operators, <coughs> such, such as Veolia. So that's the 70-something percent of water volume which is delivered by private operators in the country. And uh, overall, they supply more than 4 billion cubic meters of water every year. Uh, in fact, it's an, the market is mostly uh, shared between three main operators. Uh, I'm sorry to say Veolia is the first one with a market share of, uh, of about 40% in the water sector, in, uh, a bit less than 30% in the sanitation sector. Suez Environment is uh, the second operator. And so SAUR is, uh, is uh, the third one. But we have a host of smaller operators who play their role and uh, who keep uh, a competitive uh, uh, pressure uh, on, on, on the market. Just give you an overview about what's happening in the rest of Europe in terms of delegation to private operators. As you can see, Germany is on the left, for those who are at the back. Germany has... Uh, uh, opened about one third of its market to private operators. England uh, is fully uh, on, uh, open to, to private. It's, it's a full-fledged pr privatization, as you know. Spain is pretty open with 56%. Uh, France, we are at the 70-plus uh, figures that I indicated. Netherlands uh, is purely public. And uh, places like Poland in, in the east are slowly opening to private uh, operations. It's a rather stable marketplace. Uh, in fact, a lot of, 
a lot of contracts are being rebid every year. Uh, you have about 9,500, 400 or 500 uh, contracts with private operators in the country uh, between water and wastewater, and about 700 of them, that's an average, uh, are being rebid every year. So the pressure is absolutely intense. But overall, until the recent two or three years, uh, it was a zero-sum game. Municipalities elected to come back to uh, public operations, but some of them moved and are still moving to private operations. A major change uh, occurred in 2010. Paris, who had been uh, privately operated for 25 years, decided for strictly political, uh, and it, it's a choice, it's a political and democratic choice, elected to come back to uh, uh, public operations. I must say that uh, that was done after uh, a considerable improvement <coughs> of the quality of the service when we took over Paris 27 years ago now. The leakage rate was 22%. When we handed back uh, the system to the Paris municipality, leakage was about 3.6%. <coughs> so it's not a matter of performance. It's a matter of political choice, which is absolutely uh, uh, fine. It's the, the, the rule of the game. What we hope is that, in the end, the water consumer will find its uh, interest in that, uh, in that change. Paris, at the same time, the suburbs of Paris, which is a huge uh, uh, population, about 4.3 million people, uh, tendered their water system, uh, more or less at the same time. And it, uh, it was won by, by Veolia, and we are now operating that contract for the next 12 years, and we are serving those uh, 4.3 uh, million people. So Paris is not, the greater Paris is split, in, in a sense, between private operations and public operations. <coughs> Paris center is only 2 million people, Paris suburbs, 4.3. Um, Water services can be broken down you know, in three main, main areas. You have the networks, you have the plants that either collect the sewage or distribute uh, the, 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 the water, and you have customer service in, in the center. And I just want to, uh, those slides are intended to help you understand how things are delegated partially or totally to the private sector or fully internalized within the municipalities. Within that, uh, uh, those uh, three concentric uh, disks, <coughs> what can, the spectrum of what can be delegated uh, uh, can move from the simplest, which is operations and maintenance at the top, to some level of renewal of the equipment on the, uh, within the plants and within the, the networks, to new works and uh, when uh, a private operator owns uh, some, of the, some of the assets, of course, it has to take charge of the financial dimension of, uh, of this. What you must bear in mind is that in Fr what characterizes the French market is a huge variety, uh, variety sorry, of, of types of contracts. There is a whole, whole, uh, whole continuum of, of, uh, of contracts from the simplest O&M, operations and maintenance contract, to what is called concession. I will come back on this uh, notion in a few, uh, in a few minutes. Uh, but in, in fact, a lot of uh, uh, the key aspects of those contracts are tailored to the needs of the local authorities. And that's an essential part, so that it matches their, their strategy, their financial constraints, uh, and uh, the willingness of their mayors and, uh, and uh, uh, other elected officials. Affermage, which is the word, or it's a French word, but it's been now recognized because it's a, it's a concept that has now been uh, transferred to other countries. Affermage is a way to manage um, uh, 
uh, water, which is very widely used uh, in France. So in, an affair, in, in a typical affermage uh, system, the private operator would take over the three, the three layers that uh, I described earlier, the networks, the plants, the customer service. But usually, uh, the operator would not invest massively, at least, in the assets that are still owned by the, uh, the public authority. On some occasions, uh, uh, the, the private operator would invest in some uh, new works. It's uh, quite uh, rare, but it was usually uh, invest in uh, the renewal of some major equipment, pumps, uh, tanks, whatever. The second main contract, type of contract, is the concession contract. <coughs> As you can see, it goes much further, even if ultimately the local authority will retain the ownership of the assets. Uh, in that case, the private operator has the responsibility for investing in the new assets, in building them, of course, in a competitive process, in a transparent process. But uh, uh, some private financing is uh, injected in that kind of uh, contract. The next slide uh, tries to convey that that notion that over the, the 9,000 plus existing contracts with private uh, operators in France, you have a, a full continuum of solutions from the hard concession contracts with a wide uh, level of investment by the private operator to the very light operations and maintenance contracts, which uh, are the simplest to, to manage. The regulation of, and governance of this uh, situation is, is extremely complex. Uh, you believe that uh, the Dutch model uh, was, was a difficult one to, to understand, to grasp at first sight. The French one is even more challenging, I, I, I believe. No single uh, government office oversees the, 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 the water sector. The mayor of each municipality must report publicly on the, on the performance. And you have a host of, all, of other bodies uh, that uh, uh, control uh, what, what is being done by the municipalities or between uh, the municipalities and the private operators. Of course, you have abstraction licenses, uh, you have a competition commission, you have a pollution regulator, you have also the health authorities, all of them are playing a role. And uh, when I've tried to improve those slides uh, yesterday evening, uh, I, I wanted to do kind of simple drawing, and uh, after half an hour, I dropped it. <laughs> uh, the competition, again, is, uh, is in a pretty similar manner. Uh, there is no national regulatory agency to approve the rates or define the service standards. Uh, in fact, what characterizes also the, the, the situation in, in France is that water pays for, for water, but it pays fully for water. So it depends exactly on the difficulty, on the technical uh, difficulty and on the, the quality of the existing assets. And it happens that uh, municipality A can pay its water three euros per cubic meter, and municipality B, people in municipality B nearby, just a boundary between them, may happen to pay uh, five euros per cubic meter. Because the full cost of uh, the provision will be recognized locally at the local level. Uh, so at the, for the moment, no per equation system exists, except when the municipalities have decided to group together and, and form syndicates uh, that, uh, that enable them to share resources, share investments. Uh, that's the only way per equation to the consumer is achieved. I won't spend too much time on, on, uh, on this. 
Um, in, a, in a similar manner to what happens in the Netherlands, uh, we have those six water basins. Of course, you have 25 in the Netherlands. We have six in France. Uh, each of them is on uh, a given uh, river basin. There is one for the Rhone River, one for the Seine River, and so on and so forth. I won't do, redo the geography of France. Uh, it, it's a rather democratic instance also uh, for us that collects abstraction fees, that uh, uh, collects uh, uh, disposal fees, and then uh, gener generates subsidies to the municipalities for their investments. So uh, there is a board on each of those uh, river basin uh, agencies that defines the level of the fees, that defines the allocation of the money to the various syndicates or individual communes. Uh, you may wonder why this complex, if not complicated, model uh, works. I think that it's because it has that very well-defined and very flexible contractual framework that we can pick in. Uh, uh, we have also a complex organization of public bodies in charge of the water matters. It could be simpler. And also you have that intense, again, uh, competition between operators themselves when, when a municipality has decided to outsource and you have uh, uh, that constant alternative for the municipalities who elect to operate themselves their water or to delegate it to uh, the, the private sector. This very intense competitive landscape and the fact that all the operators over time have grown uh, quite substantially made sure that uh, a huge body of engineers, of, of technicians, uh, and that a lot of technologies have been developed over time uh, in, in, in the country. Uh, and France is a big exporter of water services. I'm, I'm here. Uh, I'm an example of that. I'm trying to. Uh, so it gives a competitive edge uh, to, to the municipalities to have that contractual flexibility, to have that wealth of human com competencies and of technologies. In the end, the, the, the end result of that is a high quality uh, water service. All the KPIs of the industry are pretty good, I must say, uh, at this point in time. The conformity of water quality to standards is above 99%. Uh, I hope that, we hope that at some time we'll fight for the the third nine in that uh, indicator. Uh, the physical chemical is slightly under that, but close to 99%. The number of complaints that are received for the public, uh, France-wide, irrespective of private public considerations, is very low, with 4.6 uh, per thousand per year. Uh, and the non-programmed service interruptions for per thousand consumers is about three uh, per year, which is, which is, I say, uh, pretty good at this, uh, at this point in time. The prices have been under control. Uh, I'm sorry, but the graph is a bit uh, difficult to read for those at the back. The time scale starts from 99 here to 2009 here, and you have a basket of different indices. Uh, the water index is that line here. Uh, uh, which is pretty much in line with uh, the public transportation index. Uh, and uh, the increase was, uh, the index was 100 in, in 99, it was 125, about 125 10 years later. So the prices of water have not raised significantly uh, between that, uh, that time. But of course, a number of other indexes, such as construction costs in black, or, of course, uh, fuel in blue have, uh, have raised uh, considerably. So overall, the prices, because of that in intense competition uh, landscape, have been in check. And consumers seem to be satisfied with this. Uh, the, the most recent panels show that 77% of the public is satisfied with their uh, water consumption. I don't have the figures for the dissatisfied ones, but I suppose that there are 
a number of neutrals who take for granted that they have water at the tap every morning. They should not. Uh, and uh, the other graph is a funny one. I liked it. It shows that the consumption of bottled water in France has been decreasing uh, overall since uh, 2003. It's now below 50% of households that do a regular uh, consumption of bottled water, while the consumption of tap water has raised uh, very significantly. And of course, our job is to promote tap water, not because it increases the volumes. The volumes are dropping all the time because of the benefits of, uh, of uh, metering and, and, uh, uh, and uh, the global public education which is, uh, which is conducted. But uh, it makes no sense buying your water seven times uh, more uh, dearly than, than the one you have on the tap. No people from Nestle or Danone in the room, I hope. <laughs> and thank you very much for your attention.